read to you 10 principles of a new scientific integrative philosophy. Well, yeah, scientifically based. So it's 10 principles. Number one, or really it's actually 11. But yeah, seamlessness, number one. We begin our approach to these powers of the universe with the little understood idea of seamlessness. This is just my word for the ground or source of all being, what classical Greek philosophers called the Apeiron. Sometimes translated as a realm of pure potentiality, some scientists speculate this primordial ground might even correspond to what's known in elementary particle physics as the vacuum or the quantum vacuum. The amazing notion of the quantum vacuum was first hypothesized in the 20s and experimentally verified in the 40s. We now know the pervading, um, that pervading the entire universe is a realm that gives birth to an incessant stream of particles and antiparticles. These elementary quanta spontaneously birth forth into existence and then just as quickly annihilate themselves and thereby disappear black into the seamlessness. Every verbal description of this realm is going to be inadequate in some ways and adequate in others. I used to call it nothingness as a way of indicating that this is a realm not of objects, but seamlessness carrying itself through meaning of divisionless domain replete with subtle connections. So this is Brian Swim, I should have mentioned. It's an article by him. Number two, centration. The first cosmological power is centration. Centration is the universe as a whole centering upon itself in order to give birth to a new being, a new person, a new animal, a new molecule. Think about your own existence. You came forth from your mother and father. Your mother and father came forth from their grandparents, and their genetic information is compressed into molecular form in each of their cells, each of your cells. If you go back further and further, back to the beginning of the vertebrae world, you realize that your lungs are formed because of the lives of particular fish that lived hundreds of millions of years ago. That process of building lungs has been remembered all of this time and is now present in you. So, when we digest food, which was first emerged over two billion years ago, the same process using the same molecules that work in us today. We have billions of years of the universe present in our bodies. But it's not just the knowledge or information that is in us. It's also the, the energy that's, that's the power to act. We have energy coursing through us from our last meal. This energy is from the sun. The sun has poured out its energy, which has been absorbed by the earth and transformed into food. So the sun's energy is coursing through us, but the sun gets its energy from the hydrogen atoms, which got their energy from the birth of the universe. The energy of the birth of the universe is coursing through us. In that sense, the universe gathers all of itself together and gives birth to each new being. That's the power of centration. The third force is allurement. Actually, the second force, because the first one that I spoke of wasn't really a force. It was the ground from which all these forces come. So number two, allurement. This second power is that of allurement. It's the way in which the whole universe holds itself together at the level of the galaxies. We call this the gravitational interaction. Gravity is that which keeps the galaxies in place. It's what draws the sun together. At the level of molecules, it has a different name. It's called the electromagnetic interaction. The atoms and molecules in our body are being held together moment by moment with this attractive force of le electromagnetism. The word allurement points to all of these forces or forms of attraction. These are broad, I guess you could just call them broad principles. And in my opinion, Probably some of these principles could be, in some regards, merged together. But uh, I think it's a pretty good list of, of ten. So the third power is emergence. We've discovered that the universe is not a place, it's a story. A story of an irreversible sequence of emergent events. For a long time we thought the universe was an established realm that had its major creativity happening only at the beginning of time. We now understand that the universe is an ongoing creative event. Stars come forth, galaxies come forth, planets emerge, life births in, into existence. The power of emergence could also be called ongoing creativity. In some ways it's the greatest discovery in the history of the human sciences. The, the universe as a whole and each being within it is permeated with the power of emergence. And number four, homeostasis. Homeostasis is the fourth power in which um, 
the way in which the great achievements of the universe are maintained. The term comes from the science of uh, physiology and originally referred to the way in which a mammalian body maintains We are using it here more generally to describe how the universe maintains its great achievements. They don't just come and go. The universe values its finest moments of magnificence and holds them together. The oyster shell is one such achievement which has held together for generations and generations. It's something that has worked beautifully, and the interactions taking place on the, on the planet as a whole enabled all this beauty to continue to come forth. The homeostasis of Earth as a dynamic, integrated systems tool holds itself together in communities, and the atmosphere, and the biosphere, as well as the geosphere. So that's number four. Number five. <laughs> a little awkward here is cataclysm. The fifth power is cataclysm. Cataclysm is the process by which the universe destroys some of its structures, not only in the sense of accidents that might happen, but also as a part of ongoing emergence. The universe syste systema systemically uh, breaks apart particular aspects of itself as a necessary process for ongoing vibrant creativity to continue. In other words, the beauty that has characterized 14 billion years of existence would not have been possible so far as science can understand without the process of cataclysm. Number six is synergy. A synergistic relationship is one that gives birth to causal factors in the universe that would not otherwise exist. One of the most surprising examples that pertains to this is the elementary particles such as neutrons and protons. Right? Um, for instance, if a neutron is on its own, it will disintegrate after a few minutes. But if the same neutron is brought into relationship with one or more protons, it can easily exist for billions of years. That's one way synergy operates in quantum physics. In biology, synergy can be thought of as a collaborative association in order to arrive at strategies that are ever more successful in the great drama of life. Fundamentally, synergy shows the ontological power of relationships. Transmutation. This one's interesting. Number seven is the power of transmutation. This is the way in which the universe sometimes insists that something uh, new come forth. The universe never seems completely satisfied. Why didn't it just settle down and relax once the hydrogen atom had formed? When Earth finally emerged and brought forth bacteria, why didn't the universe just call it a day? Isn't it enough that tiny pieces of the Earth jump with life? Apparently not. Our universe is a self-transcending community of beings, and transcendence is often a necessity. That is, the universe often arrives at a fork in the road with a terrible option. Either transmutate into a new form, or evaporate from the story. Transformation, I don't know if I'll make it. Two minutes. Transformation is a power related to the transmutation, is the way in which change takes place in an entire society, or community. It's an interconnected and self-amplifying dynamic. Transmutated individuals give rise to a new community, code-giving, and create a community in which it's even more likely that new individuals will go forth. Transmutation is the way in which entire systems advance. Number nine is interrelatedness. Interrelatedness is the power of integrity and connectivity. It could be called wholeness. It is the way in which each being in, in the universe depends in various ways upon other beings in the universe. Our own existence, for example, depends upon tiny organisms in the Pacific Ocean, as well as the activity of protons in the sun. Seen from the outside, the power is of interconnectivity. Seen from the inside, the power is care and compassion. They're different, but related, but the same. Radiance is the tenth cosmological power. Radiance is the power re referred to most directly by the second law of thermodynamics. Um, in simplest terms, this law explains that any being with energy will disperse that energy to radiate it into the universe. This is true of everything we examine, even the coldest group of tiniest hydrogen atoms in the darkest night of intergalactic space are happily giving birth and releasing photons of life um, as instant after instant. 
In my view, the power of radiance is an expression of the mysterious way in which the universe cannot contain the magnificence it houses. Instead, it's compelled to express itself in ten million different ways.